Fetterman Nazi! Open your eyes to the lies of social justice. Hello, America. We need to have a serious talk about March for Our Lives and how incredibly stupid and counterproductive it is. Supposedly, the purpose of the March for Our Lives campaign is to end school shootings across the United States of America. Let's take some time to evaluate the severity of the school shooting problem so we can understand how serious it is and why gun control laws are so badly needed to stop school shootings. In the USA, there are over 98,000 public schools, 33,000 private schools, and 7,000 colleges. That's a total of just under 140,000 schools. There are approximately two mass school shootings per year with multiple fatalities, and about 20 school shootings total per year. Almost all of these 20 or so school shootings each year result in one death or even no deaths at all. Let's do a little back of the envelope math on this. We know that many schools in the United States have well over a thousand students each, but let's be extremely generous and assume that every one of the 140,000 schools has 100 students for a total of 14 million students. Let's also assume that about 30 people die in school shootings per year. Again, we're overestimating this figure a bit since it's typically 20 or less per year. 30 deaths divided by 14 million students times 100 equals equals 0.0002% chance of being killed in a school shooting each year, or one in every 500,000 students. And that risk is higher than the actual risk because we've heavily overestimated the risk to make the number bigger. School shootings are so rare that they're not worth any average student worrying about. If you want to discuss something that has a high risk of death for students, look at auto collisions. About eight teens die every day in car crashes, which is about 3,000 a year. 100 times the rate of deaths in school shootings. If the March for Our Lives was about reducing the total number of teen deaths per year, they'd be demanding regulation of cars, not guns. Beyond the misguided nature of March for Our Lives, we can see that their actions are actively promoting school shootings. Media coverage of school shootings, and especially the added attention brought about by the Parkland, Florida shooting, are responsible for inspiring even more school shootings. In fact, Four school shootings with fatalities happened within the first month after the Parkland shooting. There is a historical pattern of the frequency of school shootings with fatalities increasing after every recent major mass shooting hits the news. In an indirect way, March for Our Lives causes an increase in the behavior they nominally seek to stop. That's right! The anti-school shooting movement increases school shootings. These marches only serve to increase school shootings, so what are you going to do? It's your choice. I hope you choose the right way instead of the popular one. Victims of a crime are not experts on handling that crime simply by being victimized. They're likely to be severely biased due to the trauma. Being in a motorcycle wreck where my helmet saved my life does not make me an expert on motorcycle helmet construction. Things get much darker when you pull back the curtain, though. March for Our Lives is not organized by kids at all, and the organizers have gone to a lot of trouble to make sure they don't have to disclose any information about their donors. The organizations backing March for Our Lives are extremely politically charged. They have gone to great lengths to mask the true donors funding the March for Our Lives nonprofit organization, inappropriately registering as a 501c4 so they aren't forced to be transparent about their donor lists. Can someone please explain to me why an organization like Planned Parenthood that's supposedly a family planning organization is funding this political gun control agenda? It makes no sense. Moving on, let's discuss the expertise of the kids that didn't get shot, or rather the complete lack thereof. Being a survivor of a crime doesn't give you any sort of unique insight into how to prevent that crime from happening in the future. David Hogg gleefully swings his metaphorical man parts around for the camera, but he knows nothing more about school shootings than he did before the Parkland shooting happened. If anything, he has followed a path of false emotional rhetoric rather than a factual one, making him more ignorant than a random person with no presumptions either way. Gun control laws don't matter very much when people are already slipping through the cracks of existing ones. Many recent mass shootings have been perpetrated by a person who was not legally allowed to buy a gun, but was able to anyway due to criminal and psychological reporting procedures not being followed. The gun control laws being demanded by March for Our Lives were already in place when Columbine happened, and they did nothing to stop Columbine. 
The Sandy Hook school shooter stole the guns that they used. No amount of background checks for gun purchases would have prevented that from happening. Even if these inappropriate gun control measures being demanded were to pass, it wouldn't help. Banning guns won't stop school massacres. Pipe bombs and other improvised explosive devices are easily made with over-the-counter items and can be far more devastating than a semi-automatic gun. These were used in the Columbine school shootings along with several other types of bombs. What is far more concerning than the complete ignorance of the facts surrounding the march is the media silencing of counterpoints, such as those laid out in this video. Try to look up negative opinions on March for Our Lives, such as stupid, ignorant, or sucks. The press is overwhelmingly positive despite the huge problems we just went over. That's a major problem and it shows why mainstream media cannot be trusted to remain politically neutral and honest. While everyone cries over Emma Gonzalez basking in the spotlight on television and applauds David Hogg for not getting shot, not one single person involved is doing anything to deal with the root causes of school shootings. They're treating a chainsaw wound with a finger bandage. Let's ignore the near zero risk of any given student being harmed in a school shooting and the ridiculous gun control demands and address the real issue. The problem of school shootings is a psychological one, which has nothing to do with ownership of firearms. School shooters are often mentally unhealthy, unpopular, and targets of frequent bullying by others. If the Parkland school shooter had received proper mental health treatment, the school shooting simply would not have happened. No amount of gun control will change that. The harsh truth is that the Parkland kids are being exploited by political groups as shields to advance their political agendas. They don't care about the kids at all, otherwise they'd be pushing for mental health awareness and expansion of treatment options instead of firearm bans that we already know are ineffective at stopping school shootings. Gun control won't help. School shootings aren't a serious problem in the first place, and reducing such shootings only has a chance of happening if the mental health causes are addressed. March for Our Lives ignores these truths, favoring the further erosion of citizen rights over facing reality. Someone needs to cut the puppet strings off of these poor exploited Parkland kids, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. This is Feminazi, signing off.